Oh, hello everyone. Uh, this video will be about me upgrading my network to gigabit speeds. I hope y'all enjoy the show, and I apologize for the chop shop job I did on the video. It was all done in my room, as that's where I store all my server equipment. Mainly because if someone tried to steal it, I'd wake up. Uh, enjoy the show, y'all. Hello people and welcome to another video on Eternals Information Technology Group, which I have finally finalized that name. Uh, I will be upgrading my network from a 100 megabit in the T switch, which is unmanaged, to an HP Pro Curve 2824J4903A switch. This is gigabit. It will greatly increase the speed of my network. It takes long time to offload my videos from my cameras to my NAS and then offload them to my gaming rig for altering them so that I may make better videos. It takes anywhere from a half hour to a, I don't know how long depending on video size. Oh, I'll be using Viva UTP cable for my network. Uh, it is very easy to Buy, very easy to use. I have never had issues out of it. Is what is running my entire network here at my house, I'm running wired to all the rooms here. It's a two bedroom duplex. Uh, as you can see, there's more products I bought. I just keep the boxes for warranty. And I hope you all like this. I will post the results on the speeds of before and after. Over there's the T switch. Have a good day, y'all. Hello everyone, as you can currently see, I am transferring, copying over about 14 gigabytes worth of information. It is running at the old switch speeds of about 10 megabytes a second, which is the 100 megabit switch running. Which is the Nati switch that you all have seen in this video, we'll see. Um, very slow for transferring such large file sizes. Um, as you can see up on the top right it says NAS for free. That is the NAS system I use with the custom NAS installation which means I can upgrade this box as much as I want and I will only have to pay for the parts themselves and not pay for the uh, brand name that other companies do for all-in-one NAS solutions that you can buy off Amazon or eBay or wherever you go to get them. Um, well, I'm going to end this section here. The next section right after this will be the speeds I am currently getting off of the Gigabit Network until I can implement the PFSense uh, router solution I'm currently working on. That video will come either this upcoming Sunday or it will hopefully be sooner. I am getting the hardware I need on Tuesday and I will record then. That's this Tuesday. Thank you all, and please ignore my end streaming thing on the bottom right. Have, see you all on the next section, which will be about now. Hello everyone, as you can see, I am currently copying a large file from my game storage on my NAS, which is a section I dedicate for storing installation files and backups of my game files from my gaming computer. Uh, as you can see, it is about 5 gigabytes worth of data. Um, I'm going to currently copy that from one solid state drive over to another to limit any variation on speeds from hard drives. Uh, sorry about this, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> but as you can see in the bottom left, it is running around half a gigabit to uh, 600 megabits. Uh, I should have said that better. I'm running about 500 megabits per second to 600, which is not a full gigabit. Once again, I honestly believe that this is most likely due to the fact I'm using my internet-provided router, which is an Ares modem. I used what was once Time Warner. It is now Spectrum. I honestly like Spectrum Internet. I've 
they work with me on my payments so I can pay it off on time within a month. But uh, the reason I canceled it is uh, just I don't want to fully transfer a file over if it's going to run so slow. And well, as you can see, it's running faster on Sonic Heroes for some reason. Uh, once again, it's that I'm transferring from SSD to SSD, so there should be no reason for such a bottleneck. My only, like I said, my only guess is a PF Sense would help with this, and once I get that installed and hooked up, I will run a comparison from this again to show if it helped or not. That way I can put to rest what I have read on the internet saying that a internet provided router cannot properly route a gigabit network. I hope y'all enjoy this section. Next up after this is... Oh, one sec. I literally have to... Okay. Well, I'll... Y'all will see what's next after this. I can't uh, zoom over because my recording audio section on this, I am on my video editor is not letting me scoot over while it's recording a voiceover. This is all my networking equipment that I use. It is a Matisse 10 100 megabits switch. I use this to route to less important network infrastructure such as my mom's personal computer, the little media streaming devices I have around the house, stuff like that. This is an HP Pro Curve 2824J49038. It is a gigabit switch. has 24 ports, serial console connection. These both use the same power core as a normal computer. Uh, this little thing right here that I could not remember the name of is a Dell PowerEdge 1550. I hope I got the number right. Still haven't found the front bar that's got the actual model number. It uh, uses up to three SCSI hot swappable drives. I will be using it for my PF since install. It is a temporary solution so I can get the money together to build a new custom PF Sense router. This down here is my storage mass. It is a custom built storage solution. I have installed Roswell's hot swap bay right here. Uh, this is overkill, but behind here is a water cooling solution to keep the chip cool. It is an AMD 965BE. <clears throat> I will repeat that is a 965BE AMD CPU chip in there. Uh, this case has network port lights on the front. I use NAS for free on that. That is where I store all of my work for my YouTube channel as well as backups. Right now it is using, let's see, 1 terabyte, 250 gigabyte, 250 gigabyte, 500 gigabyte. I will be upgrading all those to 4 terabyte drives as soon as I get the money for it. And it will all be installed right here. Exactly where it was before. I've just gone around and cleaned up a lot of the cable issues I had. Mounting my power strip up there will be zip tying all the cables together for a much cleaner run, like I did here and over here. Uh, like I said in my intro, I show old technology still has plenty of life in it. This uses Pentium 3s, which are not made anymore. As well as SD RAM, SDR, SD RAM. This is a SCSI drive. I don't even think they make them anymore. I think it's now SAS drives. Here's an Xbox original, which can be considered a classic now, considering their naming scheme for the new Xbox, which is the Xbox One. There's my 360. My one is down here. The 360 never used the so-called X-Plant mod. There's a reason there are retention brackets on the back of the boards. Keeps it from flexing too much and breaking solder joints. But yeah, I will be installing all this hardware right now. I would record it, my installation, but unfortunately my GoPro is almost dead. And half my charging equipment is literally wired up into the networking equipment.
it was the best way I could find to charge my equipment right now until I can get the money together for specialized charging stations, which where I can hook all my camera equipment up to. So, uh, yeah, that's all my camera blade. My apologies, that's my networking equipment solutions right now. As you all can see, most of my network and my power cords have been cable managed to make it less of a fire hazard. Oh, you don't want to know how much of a mess it is. That's the fan controller for all the fans that pull the hot air out of these areas. This is where my servers will be going. One day I plan on replacing all this and putting all the boxes up in the attic so I can remove this and put a server rack cabinet or build a custom one. Heck, I might even build a custom one in front of my bed. But, uh, yeah, everything's coming along nicely. It's all nicely cable managed. And something I should suggest that everyone does that does custom networking that makes their own cables. Use these boots. They're very handy uh, to help you remember what goes where. For example, all these blues go to computers or gaming consoles. The whites right there are what uh, tell me which cords are for the routers and where they lead. The black goes to the gigabit network. The white is the 100 megabit network. Like I said, I mainly am going to be using this still for a backup and to continue just running 100 megabit to the other computers as I do most of my networking in here. Everything, once again, cable managed, nice and neat. And my network is almost put back together, after which I will be installing the F-Sense on here, as long as I can fit it down there. Hello, people. Here's the next section of my network I was told you about. This is the uh, NAS, home-built NAS system. I have a RAID card right here I've yet to implement. Uh, it was like 30 bucks. It is not the best. If you go for RAID card, I suggest a much better one. As soon as I get the money together, I will be buying it. And I will show me installing and configuring it. This right here is a secondary gigabit NIC. Uh, it is for whenever I decide to redeploy ESXi on this particular machine. Uh, if Charlie's watching this, I apologize for not using this for ESXi anymore. I ran into several issues that I'm still trying to figure out, but I still have the installation on another drive. Uh, this is another Corsair water cooler. As you can see, it is a 120mm cooler. Yes, I know it's not actually bolted in, but these cable ties here hold it pretty good. As you can see, no leaking anywhere. This is an MSI NF750-G55 motherboard. Underneath here is the AMD 965BE CPU. I have two sticks of Corsair 2GB memory modules in there and two ADATA memory modules. They total is out to 8GB of memory. Uh, I suggest you never do this because it can kill you if you dismantle these. This was originally in my gaming rig, wound up so dusty that it did not like to run anymore, so I dismantled it and cleaned the insides. It is now nice and clean. However, like I said, if you are not careful, extremely careful, you can die from the charge on the capacitors in there. Oh. This is the Roswell Hot Swap Bay. If you want me to, I can post a link in the description where you can buy it. It runs about $50. Uh, get my keys unlocked the front so I can show you what it looks like up front. Well, so I can show you what the sleds look like. All the hard drives I have in here are laptop 2.5 drives. This particular style, that reason I like Roswell's hot swap bays is because you can put 2.5 drives in there or 3.5 or uh, and like I said they're hot swap oh this case has a nice mesh up front 
keeps the inside dust free. As you can see, I normally run this 24-7. I have yet to have to take it apart to clean it. Take a quick look at this. As you can see, there is no dust on the grill. Well, except for that little speck. This system runs at max load about 55 degrees Celsius. Uh, but yeah, this is my storage NAS for my backups and my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll post in the description if you ask for it the price and where you can buy them of all the parts. This Roswell case runs about 80 bucks. Hot Swap Bay about 50. This is about 50 for the cooling solution. I would have put a Hyper 212 Evo if I thought it would fit, but to be quite honest, I am a fan of water cooling as it keeps the chips really cool. This chip runs at 3.4 gigahertz thanks to the easy overclock switch right here. And that's all. Uh, oh, and everything is cable managed right along this. That's why it's got so many zip ties. Um, I thought about pulling a Linus and seeing if I could have this modified with some type of window so you can see the inners working. But considering it's a rack mount, I plan on modifying part of my wall unit system to have a custom rack mounts section. I will put that off as I don't know how much that will cost me. I hope y'all enjoyed this section of this video and I will continue to make sections of this video until I am done getting everything implemented and I will let you know how it goes. I'll see y'all in the next section. Hello all, I forgot to mention something else about this case. Oof. It supports a full ATX size motherboard and you can install either a normal ATX power supply maybe an ITX I don't know as I've never dealt with ITX systems before or you can install a redundant power supply setup I would have gone redundant however I don't have that kind of money uh, the cheapest I have found so far that would fit this case is $300 and I would rather save that money for a raid card or something else with a BBU backup on it uh, I'll, like I said, I'll keep you all posted on the next bit. See you in a bit. Everyone, welcome back for my network upgrade solution. This is a... Oh, sorry, I haven't used it forever and I don't know where I put the bar that goes on the front. But it's a uh, Dell server. It's a 1U rack mount server case. has 4 gigs of ECC RAM to Pentium 3 one point. 2 gigahertz I believe. It's been a while since I used it. Uh, uses SCSI interface hard drives. Uh, can you add up to two add-on cards? This is just a temporary solution until I can buy a upgraded server which will hopefully be another 1U. Uh, the reason I need to run this is from what I have understood from my research the reason I'm not running at full gigabits, gigabit speeds on my network, even though I have a gigabit switch, is most likely because I'm using my internet provided router. I used to run PFSense, but I gave up on it mainly because this damn thing is loud as hell. But I now am going to put it in a location where hopefully I won't hear it. Uh, it has three drive bays up front, a CD drive, all the usual stuff you need to check out and diagnose any issues if something were to pop up. Uh, the reason these don't have heat sinks is because this piece right here literally closes over them, almost flush against them. So these fans are the reason it's loud. They're powerful and they force air all the way throughout the back. Uh, I will post a later update on internet speeds after I get it all set up. I will be installing PFSense 2.0 three onto this router hopefully and hopefully it works uh, see y'all in a bit <clears throat> so everyone I have pretty much fully upgraded my network as you can see I've also finished cleaning my room sorry for the mess that y'all will see that y'all have seen uh, everything has been perfectly cable managed 
the oh, let me get over here. I don't remember much what I said earlier. I will probably go through this and delete and cut and paste for my video. It's going to be choppy, and I apologize for that. But blue boots are for computers. The white goes to the router. The black goes to the gigabit switch. It's pretty much the same over here. Um, as you can see, my NAS is fully running. Those lights indicate that those bays are occupied. I will be upgrading those to 4 terabyte drives per check, one each check. This is my gaming rig. And you all have seen my gaming rig in previous videos, and this is it running. Uh, something I will be doing soon is getting PFSense up and running. I have ordered the parts to properly get the hardware configured, so I may run PFSense as router OS. I will post an update on that. This will be my access point when I can run it. Mainly, I worked last night, so I'm tired. I don't have the energy right now to run this. But it's a D-Link DIR-601. I have loaded DDWRT firmware onto it. I will just have it in access point mode. Have it probably up there near my ceiling to, for best reach. Uh, and that's pretty much the upgrade for my network. It's running at gigabit speeds. Well, almost gigabit speeds. Uh, but it's running a hell of a lot faster. I believe as soon as I can get the PFSense installation up and running properly, I will be able to... Uh, run at full gigabit speeds. I have ordered an Intel Dual Intel Gigabit NIC. I have ordered uh, more RAM. I will be putting a solid state disk in it using an embedded install of PFSense. Uh, this is still running on old technology. It just has new technology mixed in. I am using a socket 478 Pentium 4 motherboard for the PFSense install considering the Dell was giving me issues. I will figure out what is up with the Dell and post a video on it so that you all know it is possible to use that technology for running a network. It's what I used to run, so it does work. I just wish I had a video to prove it, which I will eventually. Uh, the socket 478 board this will be going to, this is the solid state drive I'll be using, uh, has two natural SATA ports on it. I do not have to have an add-on card. Uh, the board is an MSI. It's one of the few that has the extended uh, PCI slot, PCI-X. Uh, the card ran me about 40 bucks. I'll be putting everything in that IBM case and I'll be running it out of there. I've ordered a dermal to properly cut the hole for the power supply to be properly mounted. Uh, well, uh, that's really all there is right now. The spare wire I got left over from when I pulled all that wire out of my uh, box of UTP Cat 5V e, Cat 6 cable. I'm really tired right now. It's cat six, my apologies. Uh it I will be using that to run the access point. Uh but yeah, my network is pretty much run for almost perfectly now. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Hello people. Uh I guess this is the end of the video. Today's sponsor was, once again, me just working my behind off, making money, working overtime, just to have the cash and do this kind of stuff. It took a toll on me this week. Uh, that's why I'm exhausted and why my video is going to be out late today. It'll still be out today, but that's why I was out late today. Uh, everything... Well, it's running pretty much perfectly. The only issue is it's not full gigabit speeds because from what research I've done, the internet provided router just is not really meant to run this network at full gigabit speeds with the amount of computers and devices I have hooked to it. Uh, so if you liked the video, press like. If you disliked it, I just ask that 
if you press this like, or even if you don't, post a comment in the description on why you disliked it. What I could do better. I am still new at YouTube. I do my best to get better. I do all this on my own. I I'm just doing what I love to do. I love working with old technology. I love showing that it still has use in today's world. Anywhere. Uh, the fact that I was originally running PFs on top of Dell, Power Edge 1550, and running an entire network of computers off of it, even if it was at 100 megabit per second, is proof alone that a normal house network would run fine off something like that. I just needed the extra power to be able to access the files off the NAS faster, to work on them, to edit the video, to upload it. And that's the only reason I upgraded my network as highly as I did. I don't plan on going 5 or 10 gigabit. I, that would cost me so much money, I just can't afford it right now. If I do, I will show you how I did it. I will record the entire upgrade instead of just cut and paste like I did on this video. Uh, but yeah, if you liked it, I just please ask that you press like. Subscribe if you would please do that. I will always post at least one video every Sunday. Uh, I eventually plan on trying to up my posting to at least twice a week and even more after that. Uh, I have a feeling I'll be doing mandatory overtime this upcoming week. Uh, so the video will not be posted on Sunday, it'll be posted on Monday. Uh, luckily it will... Actually, I might be able to post it on Sunday anyways because I'll be doing an unboxing of the lighting equipment I bought as well as all the new computer equipment that will be going to my PFSense build. The video after that will be for the PFSense build itself, its installation and setup. And that's all there is to it. I hope y'all have a good day, night, whatever time zone you're in. And, uh... Well, I guess this is it. I hope y'all like my video. Goodbye, y'all. Once again, thank you for watching another video from Eternals Information Technology Group. Yes, that is finally finalized, and I will never be changing my name again, unless someone manages to prove that they grabbed this name before me, which I really, really hope that hasn't happened, because I really like this name. Goodbye.